What's up, 10th Scale Squad? Lights. It's one of the best ways to give a more scale look to whatever your ride is, whether it's like a 10th Scale Touring Car, your Crawler, your Tow Rig, or your f***ing Traxxas. Uh, yeah, it just takes it to that next level. There's lots of different ways to do it, and in this video, I'm going to show you just a few of them. Some of these light kits are pretty expensive, like the light kit for the Traxxas UDR. I think that thing was somewhere like around $150. Now, as far as wow factor, it is definitely up there, you know? It's pretty bright, it's got lots of lights, it's even got tail lights in the back, and there are some effects you can do with it. My tow rig, the Sun Racing F450, uh, this just has underbodies on it. They're RGB programmable as well. So I can use my transmitter to control all the different lighting effects. Uh, you know, I can scroll through all the different colors and I can even make them do different things. Kind of, maybe, sort of, I hope. And these are actually made for like fixed wing airplanes. But you plug them in something like this, you give it some underbodies and you know, hashtag Bring Neons back! My crawler over here, this is just a super basic cheap light kit, uh, as well as just some LEDs that I had laying around from other projects that I just smashed in there. I gave it a little red glow on the interior. I'm missing a windshield wiper. Huh. But of course, headlights on a crawler, gotta have them. Light bar on a crawler, gotta have that. And, you know, I got a tail light mounted back here as well. And this was pretty inexpensive too. This is Ethan's Audi. Uh, this is his Audi Quattro uh, inspired by Leah Block's Audi Quattro. Uh, but this is a tribute to her car. And of course we had to pull out a light kit in it. This one does all kinds of good stuff too. You know, it's got turn signals, it's got brake lights, reverse lights, all that stuff. It's programmable. Pretty, uh, pretty affordable light kit if you're into that kind of thing. We've put light kits in a lot of our crawlers and drift cars. We've used different brands over the years. And today I'm gonna show you a quick and dirty way of doing it if you just want to put lights in your rig. And then we're going to get down and look at some of the more intricate, some of the more involved light kits. But if you just want, you know, to lights in your rig, uh, that's not, let's, let's, I'll show you, let's do it. This is my Kyosho Phaser Mark II. This is the Toyota Tundra edition, obviously. And I recently put these wheels on it. How do you feel about these wheels? Let me, let me know. I'm not sold on them. And this is a great candidate for lights because one, it's a Kyosho Phaser and their bodies are pretty, pretty uh, well detailed right out of the box. And of course it has light buckets. If you're going to add lights to your model you want you want light buckets there are ways of installing lights without light buckets but it's not the greatest in fact this super cheap light kit that i got holes oh, there we go the super cheap light kit that i got on amazon for like i don't know eight bucks nine bucks it comes with these little light universal light bucket things the idea the idea here is that you poke a hole where you want the headlight to go and you thread this thing in and then your lights sit inside of this doodle right here. I've actually done it on Project Hellspawn uh, and it looks okay, but it's not optimal. Really a, a light bucket, a, a fixture behind the lens to actually hold the light, that's what you want. Some, not all, RC bodies will actually come with light buckets. It's actually one of the determining factors on whether or not I buy a body is if it comes with light buckets. Uh, might, be, might be a deal breaker. Might be a deal breaker for me if it doesn't come with light buckets. So this one luckily does, and it has these little clips on the inside that are meant to hold the light bulb inside the light bucket. Now, with these super cheap lights, they have this little, I don't know what you would call this little thing on the end like a diffuser a light diffuser thingy but it, it doesn't it doesn't work with it doesn't work with the little the light clips and usually if you get like an aftermarket body that you do up yourself and it comes with light buckets it's not gonna have those clips anyway so what do you do i'll tell you what you do you reach for the top drawer and you pull out your shoe goo that's right 
we're gonna shoo goo these lights into the sockets. I've done it a bajillion times. It never fails, always looks fantastic. Uh, but first we need to know which lights do what. So I had the forethought when we rebuilt this uh, to take a little servo extension and plug it into the third channel of the receiver. Now, if you're getting some fancy lights that have a little light controller that you wanna be able to control from your transmitter, obviously you're gonna need a three channel transmitter and receiver. On this one, the lights are just on. If the power is on, the lights are on. It's quick, it's dirty, it's not a bad way to do it, and that's what we're going to do here. There are ways that you can control this with like an on-off switch, but you, you'll need a light controller and again, a third channel on your transmitter or receiver to actually control the dang thing. But if you just have a two channel transmitter and receiver, like most ready to run RCs, you will almost certainly have a third port open on your receiver. Well, this is just, like unraveling the mystery of the universe here. What in the blazes? Usually that channel is reserved for like a, a binding plug in most cases. And that's how it's, I think that's how it's wired up in here. I think the third channel for this is just the, the bind plug port. So you just stick your lights into that bad boy right there and bing bam pow, how do you like me now? Mmm, nectar of the RC modeling gods. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna put not a big glob, that's a pretty big glob. Way too much. Perfect. We're gonna smash it in here, just like that. The noises that you make with your mouth are 100% essential. Now it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It is important to plug in the lights, one, to make sure that they do in fact work, and two, figure out which lights go where obviously you don't want to plug the headlights into the tail lights and the turn signals into the you know you get where i'm going now our kyosho phaser mark ii here only has buckets for six lights in total two headlights in the front two tail lights in the back and two amber lights or turn signals in the corner i think do i have a spot for more lights i, I don't think so so what are we gonna do with the remaining two lights? Red on top or red on the bottom? I'm gonna say red on the bottom, which would be the top in this orientation. What in the devil here is going on? That's an amber. So we're gonna put that at the top, which is actually the bottom since we're upside down. Just a big old glob on there. Not too much. How's that look? Oh, I like it. How about the other side? Yes. And tail light insertion. I really like using Shugu because it is permanent. Like it, you know, once once you get it in there, it is not going to come out. With a little bit of effort, like if you need something to come out, it's not so permanent that, you know, it's never gonna, it, you're never gonna, you're never gonna get in there ever again. You can get back in there again. You just gotta use a little bit of effort, just a little bit of caution. So it's permanent without being, you know, like, cement or something like that. All right, now these two lights, what are we gonna do with them? Well, we could cut them, but then we run the risk of shorting them out and doing something, you know, you don't you don't wanna short these out. We don't wanna burn the thing down, not immediately after we get our fancy new light kits in it. In the past, I'll usually find somewhere in the interior to mount it, you know, like maybe a dome light or something like that. Is there maybe another hole somewhere that we can jam it? I'll probably end up just taping them up and sticking them in there and, you know, forgetting about it. Now that these lights are on, I'm going to let everything dry and cure, and then we'll go through and we will do some uh, cable management, some tidying up of the wires, making sure that everything is out of the way for all the moving parts in here. You don't want to get your wires snagged up in there. You don't want it to look like a rat's nest either. You want to make it look as though it was intentional. All right, let's let this dry and I'll show you the right way to cable manage your wires in the thing. Here is Ethan's Audi and boy, does it look good. If we take a look underneath the hood here, you can see that Ethan has gone through and actually attached the wires to the clips on the light buckets. It's a little bit of a finicky task. It might be a good idea to try to attach your lights to the light buckets before attaching the light buckets to the car because getting your wrench in there, getting your fingers in there and wrenching on the thing after the fact is a little 
it leaves something to be desired for sure. But as you can see, Ethan is using the Tamiya light kit. Now this light kit obviously comes with way more lights. There are actually more lights in the kit than what we used in this chassis right here. And you can see he went around and used Gorilla Tape to tape down the wires. They follow the A pillars here and the C pillars in the back and everything is held down nice and firm with this tape and the wires are all hidden away from view. Now, because this model uses things like brake lights, turn signals, and reverse lights, you obviously need to get a signal from the, your servo and ESC or your receiver to the light controller itself. And that's where these wires come in right here. So we're actually intercepting the steering input from the transmitter and the throttle, brake, and reverse signal uh, from the ESC. All that runs through this light controller. So it knows when you're squeezing the trigger, when you're hitting the brakes, when you're putting it in reverse, and of course, when you're turning left to right. So something to keep in mind, obviously, you know, there is uh, a huge, umbilical cord leading from the car to the body and it actually made more sense for us just to mount the receiver for the car in the roof next to the light controller since everything you know that's kind of all one uh unit now so now as you can see the servo and esc are plugged into the body rather than just the lights plugging into you know the the car, the chassis. But overall, Ethan did a really super clean installation of that. There are also light kits that, you know, do, do different effects that don't require you to intercept like an ESC and a servo uh, input. You know, you just plug it in and, and let, let me show you what I'm talking about. So this bad boy right here is my Red Cat Thunder. Yeah, this is my Red Cat Thunder Drift. And it's got a full light kit in it, and it was a pretty cheap unit that I got online. And it comes with this button right here for freaking party mode, man. So this literally is just a light kit with a little controller mounted inside the body that uh, connects to your receiver. And it's got a little button that hangs off the car or out of the car. It was mounted at one time, but, you know, after a bunch of wall taps and uh, ridiculous... Uh, bashing around on a chassis that really doesn't deserve it. My button's all loosey-goosey, but here it is. And, you know, you can scroll through all kinds of different modes on it. If you've seen it, then you mean it, then you know you have to go. What is happening? The light kit in this is not plugged in. <laughs> but you can see I used way more tape. And the reason is uh, some of these LEDs obviously are pretty bright, which is what you want but it will actually cause light to bleed through the Lexan. So rather than just illuminating through the front of the headlight, you'll actually get light bleed kind of lighting up the whole front end of the car. And it just, it doesn't look scale. So to get around that, I'll use uh, some black tape over the light buckets. Uh, I use the black Gorilla Tape because I found that stuff just works the best to really hold in the light. Back the body with black Gorilla Tape anywhere that you see light bleeding through the body. You want to isolate that light as much as you can so it's coming out the bucket and not just looking like you got a, you know, Tron style glowing body. Unless you're into that kind of thing, that's cool, I get it. It's not my thing, but if it's your thing, that's cool. But what if I've got multiple light kits? What if I've got, you know, a cheap light kit and I got a cheap little light bar and I've got a little, I got a little, uh, you know, uh, brake light that I want to put in. How do I do all that? Well, yeah, hold on. We're getting there. I'm going to show you. How does this come off? Yeah, something like that. So if you've got something like this where you've got, you know, kind of a hodgepodge of different lights and you've only got a three channel receiver, the easiest way to run multiple lights, kind of making your own light kit, is to use a splitter. Honestly, it just splits uh, the third channel or an extra channel on your receiver and it gives you power out. Or another option would be battery, you know, just just uh, just plug it in with batteries. I've got a few cars that run underbodies that just use a nine volt battery. Like check this out. The Grafen cast, part granite, part Typhon, part outcast. This thing is uh, was super fun to build and a lot of fun to drive as well. But as you can see in here, we've just got 
a nine volt battery right here. And somewhere there's a switch. Oh, the switch is right here. I shoe gooed it in place when you know. Uh, and there we go. There are the underbodies on the old Grafen cast that just runs off a nine volt battery. No battery in the car. Or obviously you can go out and you can get a battery pack for a nitro vehicle. Like pretty much all the nitro vehicles that we have here uh, run a little battery pack and it has either a JST connector on the end that you can plug, you know, right into a light kit or it just has a regular little receiver connector. And don't forget, of course, you know, there's things like the UDR where manufacturers make their own light kits specific for the vehicles. And those honestly are the most expensive, but they're the best. You know, usually they send you all the mounting hardware that you need to make it look good and fit well. And of course, instructions on where everything goes, how everything plugs in, and how to program the lights if it has lighting effects as well. But, you know, if you're a cheapo like me and you want to do something yourself, uh, I hope this has helped kind of answer your questions, give you an overview of, you know, what all the different lights that I use kind of look like, how they operate, etc., etc., and what your, what your options are. You know, maybe you just built yourself a Tamiya and all it's ever going to do is sit on the shelf, Ethan. So did that answer any of your questions? Do you have a better idea now? Are you feeling good about it? I hope so. Did I leave anything out? Let me know down below and send me your ride. I want to see the light kits that you guys put in your cars. Hit me up on the Facebook or the Instagram. It's 10 Skill Garage. Hit me up. Send me a message or... Tag me in one of your photos. I post stuff there all the time, behind the scenes stuff. I ask you guys your opinions about videos before I make them, what color I should paint things, what light kits I should put in things. And I don't, I just all around like having you around. So, you know, if you're feeling it, hit me up. Let's check on the Tundra and uh, see how that looks. Oh yeah, that looks great. That looks fantastic. What do you reckon? And I don't see, I mean, it's not, I don't see a lot of light bleed, actually. Those light buckets being big, chonky plastic, that's gonna that's gonna help a lot. I don't know, what do you think about these wheels and tires? They're definitely, they definitely got a lot of poke and uh, turning left and right is gonna be an issue, I think. I don't know, maybe I'll put the stock wheels and tires back on. Anyway, there you have it, guys. What do you think, for a quick and dirty way? You know, that what did that take us? What, how long did that take us? Did that take us five minutes? six minutes it didn't take very long and look at the result it looks great yeah the wiring's a little bit of a mess but the, you know it's not when picasso was done painting he probably left a whole mess behind but they only ever talk about a starry night and such is the case with the kyosho phaser here thank you so much for watching if this is your first time checking out the channel welcome i'm glad you found it i like to do rc shenanigans like this all the time and i've got some wicked stuff coming up you're gonna want to stick around all right, guys, until next time, chopper and wiring harnesses out here. Chopping them!